Hello everyone, this is Genuine Polish, and in this video we are going to be talking about one of the most interesting but least utilized mechanics in the entire game of auction not included. Mutated seeds. Did you forget they were a thing? I do. I'm going to be completely honest, there's probably a couple of mutated seeds sitting in some of my containers, but besides that, I really don't pay them any mind, and I don't even really bother analyzing them half the time, and there's good reason for that. Honestly, not a lot of the seeds are very viable. In this video, we are going to be talking about all the different mutations, which ones are the most viable, and how can you make them more practical. And then at the end of this video, I'm just going to throw some ideas at the wall, and if this video gets enough traffic, maybe Clay will actually pay attention and then rework mutated seeds, because as they are right now, they're honestly more trouble than they're worth, and it's just not very practical to use them or rely on any kind of setup that actually utilizes them. The thing is, is food is a necessity, so you can't choose to avoid food. You can choose to avoid steam generators or methane gas, but you can't choose to avoid food. So it'd be really cool if we had some more mechanics focused around food, so that way it's just... It's a little bit more interesting honestly all right so a brief introduction a lot of people are wondering how do i get mutated seeds you might be under the misconception that you want to subject a seed to a lot of radiation that's incorrect you actually want the plant to grow in a high radiation environment each plant has a specific radiation maximum and you want to get within 80 percent 80 percent of that maximum to maximize the chance that it drops a mutated seed and of course if you use a duplicate with a really high farming skill it's going to increase the chance that a seed drops period and the closer that you get to 80 percent of the maximum radiation for that plant the higher the chance that a mutated seed will drop so a big reason why i'm doing this video is because you can't find like any information online so doing some testing i found that if you expose a plant to 80 percent of its maximum radiation and if it drops a seed it has about a 20 to 25 percent chance to drop a mutated seed those are not bad odds you can see that the maximum is 4600 rads for mealwood we got pretty close to that number and about a quarter of the seeds that dropped were mutated seeds so that's awesome but not every plant is 4600 rads a lot of the decor plants are 2200 rads and then sleet wheat gas grass and spore child are 12200 rads so there's a huge range and you're just gonna have to find that depending on the plant you might be thinking 4000 rads is a lot and it is it's a ridiculous amount honestly and 12200 that's absurd i'd be really impressed to see someone that can satisfy the growing conditions for that plant and also have around 10,000 rads that's just insane that's ridiculous honestly so once you get a mutated seed drop, you're going to need a duplicate with farming tier 2 and a botanical analyzer. The duplicate will pick up that seed and analyze it. The duplicate needs to do this for every single individual seed. At least that's what it seems like. But once you've analyzed one of each of the different species, you might notice that the number that you have available is a lot higher than one. The reason being is that when you actually go to plant the plant, it'll take into account how many seeds there are even if they haven't been analyzed. So when you look at the seed on the ground, it'll look like it's an unidentified species, but your farmer will actually be able to plant that without identifying it. So the game wants you to identify every single plant, but the farm plot has a simple workaround. So in total, there is 10 mutations. Generally with the trade-off that you're going to get is you're going to get more yield or more food at the cost of either increased fertilization or increased growth speed or vice versa. It could be increased growth speed, but a lot more fertilization. That's kind of the trade-off that you have with mutated seeds. You have to kind of decide which one's more valuable to you, the time or the resources. So the thing is, every single one of these 10 mutations requires 250 rads per cycle. That is a lot of radiation to cover an entire farm with. That's an absurd amount of radiation, actually, depending on how big your colony is and how many duplicates you have. And besides that, these plants do not drop seeds. Again, mutated seeds don't really get that much attention from the auction not included community, so there could be a workaround for that that just hasn't emerged yet. Currently, you should expect no seeds from your mutated plants, which means that you're going to have to have a population of the normal plants growing anyways. And with that, let's say you have 100 plants growing, you can expect 25 mutated seeds. And from those 25 seeds, we don't have the number percent chance for each individual mutated seed, but we can assume that the numbers are evenly distributed. So with that, out of 100 plants being exposed to 80% of the radiation, you will probably get two to three of the seeds that you're looking for, which is insane. So with that, I'm going to quickly go over the mutations that I think are the most interesting and they have other uses besides just food. So first up, we have juicy fruit. This requires plus 25% fertilization, which isn't a huge amount. But the awesome thing about it is when the plant is ready to harvest, it'll immediately drop its fruit which means that an auto sweeper can pick it up. So that way you can effectively have an instant auto farm and you don't even have to have any duplicate interact with it at all, period. You're not gonna have rot on the floor. You don't have to have any entrances. You can have a perfect climate completely separated from your base 
And if you have a whole bunch of juicy fruit plants, you can have an auto farm like we never could before. Next up, we have Exuberant. So this requires plus 50% fertilization. It increases the grow rate by 75%. That's pretty extreme. That means you're going to be harvesting millwood every single cycle. But here's the coolest thing about it. It has a bonus harvest. You get four kilograms of rot upon harvest. Now this does come with a big negative. The food starts with 10,000 germs of food poisoning. Lastly, for the niche mutations, we have blooming. Blooming causes flowers to grow on the plant and it increases the decor by 20. So that's pretty cool and it doesn't cost any increased fertilization. So that's just a nice little bonus to increase the decor of your farm. So now we're going to talk about the very best mutations to use for food crops, in my opinion. So first off, we have Super Specialized. All this does is reduce its temperature range by 80%, which is pretty significant, but it does give you a plus 100% yield. So it doubles the amount of food that you get from a harvest, which is pretty awesome. Just below that, we have Specialized, which is the same thing, except it's 50% of its temperature range and it's plus 50% yield. You're gonna get 1.5 times the calories that you normally would get. And next up, which could be number one for you, depending on how difficult it is for you to fertilize this plant, it reduces the fertilization needs by 50%, which is pretty significant. It does reduce the yield by 25%, but it also increases the temperature range by 50%. So now you can grow mealwood in a 90 degrees Fahrenheit colony, which is a huge bonus. And at the cost of 25% yield, that's not that bad at all. And before we move on, I just wanna have an honorable mention for the absolute worst mutation, Wildish. It reduces the fertilization cost by 90%, which is pretty great, but it increases the life cycle by 350%. That's just shy of the 400% that it would have if it was wildly growing, and it would have zero fertilization need if it was growing in the wild. So I think wildish is honestly the worst mutation of the bunch, but that's just my opinion. So how can we make all these more practical? Well, without using mods, we're really kind of limited to how we can actually make these viable. The obvious one, which I'm super in favor of if you see my channel, is pit flower pot planting. This removes the fertilization need entirely for the plant. It doesn't remove the irrigation need, but that means you can negate all of the fertilization requirements for these different mutant seeds, and it makes some of the more expensive ones more viable. Now, number two is you can use the cosmic radiation of your planet, depending on how intense it is, to provide that ambient radiation for these plants. With 250 average rats per cycle, it's pretty infeasible. Most of the people don't require the duplicates to wear atmos suits to go into their farm, and it really limits how much traffic you can have go into the farm, and they're using oxygen power just to harvest the plants. So that 250 rads is actually kind of big if you're worried about radiation sickness, but you can use glass ceilings on your farm and use cosmic radiation and kind of mitigate the cost of generating that radiation. So after all that, you might be thinking, screw mutant seeds. And I'm right there with you, honestly. Even after doing this video and doing this research, there's not a lot of seeds that I really want to implement in my base besides the juicy fruit, so that way I can have an auto farm. The rest of them are pretty interesting mechanically speaking, but just the difficulty in acquiring the seeds in the first place to where you can convert your entire food supply to the mutated version is quite an undertaking. But with that being said, I do have some suggestions for how I think clay could rework mutated seeds so that way they're actually practical to use in game. I think there's really two things, and it could be one or the other. I think the radiation requirement should be removed. Having consistently around 250 rads to cover an entire farm where you might have hundreds of plants is ridiculous, honestly. Now, it's not that difficult to have more than 250 rads, but you don't want to have such an extreme amount of radiation where your duplicates are constantly getting sick. And the reason why having rads per cycle as a requirement for growing seems weird to me is the exuberant plant. Part of that plant's characteristics is it has a debuff of having food poisoning on the harvested fruit. The thing is, in a radiation environment, those food poisoning germs die relatively fast. It kind of feels like that wasn't an intended interaction, so I think that the radiation was probably just an afterthought. The other solution I have is let mutated plants drop their own species of seeds. This way you can quickly grow a mutated farm and you don't have to spend hundreds of cycles exposing hundreds of plants to radiation just to get enough seeds to convert your farm. Honestly, the chance that you get the exact seed that you're looking for in the exact right conditions is pretty ridiculous right now. Now, along with that suggestion, there's another workaround for that too. Give us a building that exposes seeds to radiation. Have it be powered by rad bolts that exposes seeds to radiation and you can select which kind of mutated seed it becomes. This way, you don't have to worry about the mutated plants dropping seeds. You can just take perfectly normal seeds and you can choose which variants you want. So you might want some deck or meal woods closer to the living quarters and then you could build some exuberant grub fruit in a room that has uh, radiation so it can kill the food poisoning. This way you can really kind of choose what mutated seeds you want and actually utilize them in your base instead of just having random seeds pop up here and there and throwing them in with the rest of your plants. 
All right, everybody, that's going to be it. I hope you learned something about mutated seeds, and I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to experiment with them because there's not a lot of information in the auction not included community about mutated seeds. So we should all try to explore them a little bit more and see if there's practical workarounds for all of their ridiculous mechanics. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe. It would genuinely make my year if I got to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Uh, it's probably unlikely, so if you can drop a sub, I'd love it. But do share this video so maybe it gets enough traffic to where maybe somebody at Clay will check it out and listen to my suggestions. Or better yet, you guys should leave your own suggestions down in the comments below about how seed should be reworked. And, and who knows, maybe this will be my first video to get 100,000 views and Clay will actually pay attention and rework mutant seeds so we can actually use them in game. That'd be awesome. See you next time, guys.